That's when you think the wrestling couldn't get any more exciting. We have now entered another week and we're about to get AEW Grand Slam and an AEW Rampage event that is going to go down in front of around about 20,000 people at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. I tell you, we are all just living in a dream. This is of pay-per-view quality as well, so given all that information, I thought it was important to take my brain and try and figure out and try and to predict what the hell is going to happen. I would like you to join along with me in the comments below. So everybody put your smart caps on. Yeah, let's do it. We shall start off with Brian Pillman Jr. versus MGF and straight away I am going to pull a controversial idea out of my ass. But given how kind of controversial this feud has been, don't you think that that just makes sense? But one of my favorite things about AEW is that they rarely do disqualification finishes. In fact, I think we had one which was in the Iron Man match between Kenny Omega and Pac. But even then, look at my weird face and my like suspicious eyes. I am not entirely sure. But I do know that we haven't had a lot of them, and that's why I actually think in this, we should pull it out the bag, because it doesn't matter if you do it here and there. It's only when you're doing them multiple times on every single show that it gets a little bit annoying. But let's say that Maxwell Jacob Friedman keeps cheating because he is just a massive nimrod. And all of a sudden, Brian Pillman Jr. starts channeling his dad and says, you know what? You have taken this too far. You have said too many things about my family. And now in this match, you're trying to cheat me out of a victory. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this still chair and I'm going to beat you up really bad. And I know that it kind of sucks because you don't actually get a proper winner. That's the reason people get so annoyed with double count outs or disqualification or things of that nature. But wouldn't it make Brian Pillman Jr. look like a badass? Yes, it would. But also, it would mean that he doesn't take a loss. And you don't want MGF to lose, because he recently lost to Chris Jericho. And you don't want Brian to lose, because right now he's on a little bit of a tear. So why not do it? Now, admittedly, I'm going to put myself into some real bother when we get to our main event based on this very reason. But as always, it's my prediction show. I'll do whatever the hell I want. Also, if you can believe it, we have Malachi Black versus Cody Rhodes. This is why it's awesome only having four pay-per-views a year, because out of nowhere, you can do TV cards such as this and turn me into a wrestling nerd. Now, this one is actually really hard to try and break down because Cody Rhodes has only recently made his triumphant return to TV. And I like Cody Rhodes. He's like a super duper baby face. So, of course, I want him to win. But it just seems far too early to beat Malachi Black. So what the hell do we do? And I know that's why you tuned into this video, but this one has me stumped. So I think we have to dip into the past. Because do not forget, when this happened before, when Brody Lee absolutely murked Cody Rhodes, Cody came back and he got his triumphant victory. So maybe this time, just in order to keep the story more interesting, you just have Malachi Black boot Cody Rhodes right in the face. And then he beats him. I mean, that would absolutely do the world of good for Malachi because you'd be like, oh my gosh, they fought twice and twice he's just beaten him. And then you can do a third match down the line when only then Cody Rhodes gets the chance to have his hand raised. Sometimes you should do something different for the sake of doing something different. And you know that AEW will tie into the story because they do over and over again. And maybe there's even a swerve here. I don't know. I mean, you're going to have to assume that the Nightmare family get involved in some sense because he has basically taken out Arn Anderson, and he took out Lee Johnson, and he took out Dustin Rhodes. So maybe you could have some kind of a distraction, which I would be fine with. But I do think it's far better that, again, he just cracks Cody's skull and gets the one, two, three. So I'm going out on another limb here, and I'm picking Malachi Black. <laughs> I'm going to be so wrong. Following on this goodness is Sting and Darby Allen taking on FTR. I know I do this all the time, but it's important. We can't forget these things. Imagine when they were the revival. I said in a few years, these guys are going to be fighting Sting. You'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? You punch me in the face. Thankfully, we actually get to an easy one here, or at least for me. You've got to have Sting and Darby Allen win. You just do. Sometimes you have to give the fans what they want. And I am a wrestling fan, and I want to see Sting kick all the ass, and then I want to see him hit Sting a splash, and I want to see him put on the sharpshooter. Sorry, excuse me, the Scorpion Deathlock. Whoops, Bret Hart just snuck in here, and I want him to win. I don't care that he's 62 years old. I don't care that he's the older guard. I don't care about any of that. I love Sting. I want him to be my best friend. And a good way to do that is to back him when he's having matches. And also, do not forget that Tully Blanchard and Sean Spears wiped the face paint off these two, so they need to get some revenge. Now, yes, there's every chance that Tully Blanchard does something in this, which continued this absolutely crazy feud between Sting and Tully. 
but I don't want to go in that direction. So once again, I am placing my foot in the sand, don't know what that means, and I'm picking Darby Allen and Sting. We have a huge AEW Women's World Championship match as well because it is Britt Baker defending her title against Ruby Soho. Here she is in my hand. Now I am very excited about this because if you saw their promo battle they had on Rampage, it was absolute dynamite. <laughs> I'm an absolute idiot. But really, as good as Ruby Soho is right now, and as popular as she is, should we really be taking the title off of the dentist? And I don't think that we should, just because it doesn't feel like the right time. Now look, would I be upset if all of a sudden Ruby Soho became the champion? No, I would not. But if we just bring in the AEW Men's World title for a second, every time we have made that change, you go, oh, of course we have to do that. I can feel it in my bones. And with this one, well, I don't feel it in my bones. I just think there's so much more Baker needs to do before she does drop this, especially have a proper feud with Thunder Rosa when the gold is on the line. So the last thing you want to do is give it to Ruby Soho and then give it back to Britt Baker because you start playing hot potato with your belts and that never works. So you just got to come up with something here where you protect Soho, but also allow Baker to sneak away from her title. So why not use Jamie Hayter and why not use Rebel? I mean, that's literally why they're part of the clan. And I think the main one of this one is that they just have a really good match. Because we all know that Ruby Wright wasn't used properly in WWE. And ever since she's come across the All Elite Wrestling, she's reminding everyone, oh my gosh, yeah, you're a really good wrestler. So now if she can back that up with a really good wrestling match, which she's more of capable of, I would imagine when all is said and done, everybody wins. Point is, I'm picking Britt Baker, probably because Rebel does something stupid. Which, of course, brings us to our main event, and I can't believe I get to say these words. Because here in the middle of September, it is Brian Danielson taking on Kenny Omega. I mean, I'm just so happy it's finally here. And the big thing here is that the AEW world title isn't on the line, but I don't give a flubbins about that because it just means we can revisit it at some point in the future. And to be honest with you, if you want to do this match around about 82,912 times, I will still be rooting for it when we get to the end of that run because, again, it's Brian Danielson versus Kenny Omega. My worlds have collided. Now, this is probably going to be a match of the year candidate, which is crazy when you think about it, because that's the level we're expecting here. And of course, you would have to assume that Brian Danielson is going to win, because again, the AEW world title is not on the line. But is it good for Kenny Omega to lose so soon after he lost to Christian Cage? The answer is probably not. So I'm about to piss everybody off. And this is where the problem of doing that finish with MGF and Brian Pillman Jr. comes into the fray. But I would have them go for a good 30 minutes, if not longer, or whatever the time limit's going to be. But then that clock expires, meaning they went to a draw. And I get it straight away, like, that's absolutely crap, I don't want a draw. But this is where I'm tying it into real sports, right? Sometimes you get two massive football teams. Let's go Chelsea and Manchester City over here in the English Premier League. Everybody wants to see a winner. And everybody's really excited. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And sometimes they can have an absolutely flipping fantastic match. But because they're both so good, they kind of cancel each other out. And it ends 1-1 or 2-2 or 3-3. But by the end of it, you're still like, hot damn, I had a good time. And I totally believe you can do that with wrestling. Not constantly, because people would get bored of it. But AEW has told you, hey, every now and then we are going to do draws. A draw is something that could happen. So as you have introduced that into your universe, when you need to pull it out of your back pocket, you absolutely should. And I think this is the time, mainly because of who's in the damn match. I mean, these are two of the best wrestlers on the world right now. Do you honestly think that they can't pull off a time limit draw? Of course they can pull off a time limit draw. And I bet in those last 30 seconds, you're losing your mind. Like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, look at your arms going crazy. So I think this is what they should do, especially because it would take my intrigue gland and turn it on even more than it already is. Otherwise, just have Brian Danielson win. The title's not on the line. Surely that's the reason you didn't put the title on the line. So keep it simple, stupid. But actually, I think I prefer the draw. And while we are here, I think it's important we talk about this Rampage card as well, because the show has been extended to two hours, and you can see why. Listen to this. The two matches I can throw at you straight away are Anna Jay versus Penelope Ford, which has been built up very well on AEW TV, but also the tag team champions, the Lucha Brothers, teaming with Santana and Ortiz, to take on the Hardy family office. Now I would absolutely have Anna Jay win that one because she's only just come back from injury and right now she needs those W's so you can go, oh my gosh, Anna Jay is so great. 
and hopefully she'll be so over the moon she can go fix the Dark Order, which is still ruining my life. And it's the same with the Lucha Brothers and Santana and Ortiz. They should get the win, but then there should be a bit of friction there because that absolutely should be our next tag team feud. We're also going to have the Men of the Year taking on Chris Jericho and Jake Hagar. And this again gets us back to this same position where you're like, wait a minute, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky absolutely need to win this, but is Chris Jericho going to be on the end of another defeat? No, of course he's not. I bet Jakey Boy takes the pin here, but you damn right. Dan Lambert and his crew right now are absolutely killing it, and they need the momentum. We're also somehow getting CM Punk versus Powerhouse Hobbs, which for a geek like me is very exciting because yes, it's CM Punk's first TV match in seven years. And while you assume Mo is absolutely gonna win here, is he? Is he? Yeah, he probably is. But that's absolutely okay, because aside from a few crazy people going, I can't believe CM Punk jobbed out Darby Allen, which was not true at all, just associating yourself right now with Punk is going to do you a world of good, especially because you know that Punk is going to sell his ass off a of powerhouse hob to the point after, you're like, oh my gosh, this guy is a tank. This may actually be my most excited under the radar match. It's not under the radar at all. It's flipping CM Punk, but yes, he will win. And then if you can handle it, we've got the super click coming back together, which of course is Adam Cole and the Young Bucks taking on Christian Cage at the Jurassic Express. This is nuts. How are we going to survive these three days? It's just too many superb matches on paper. This one is a little bit easier to predict because, of course, the Bucks are coming off a loss at All Out, so they need a win. Adam Cole should be winning for days. And when it comes to Christian and Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, well, you could pick either one of them to lose, really, and I don't think anybody would actually mind that much. And to finish all of this off, we are getting Suzuki Gun on AEW, taking on John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. That's not only in Eddie Kingston's hometown, but it's also a damn lights out match. Just for a second, sit down and remember all the other AEW lights out match. Every single one has been crazy. And you know, it is going to be off the wall because Suzuki, he crazy. John Moxley, he nuts. Eddie Kingston, he bonkers. And Lance Arch likes to grab people and chuck them through ceilings. So this is going to be complete carnage. I guess it will be the last thing on the show because again, it's lights out and that's where AEW likes to put it. I just can't get my head around it. On Saturday, I am going to need to sleep. Suzuki will be leaving All Elite Wrestling soon though, whereas John Moxley and Eddie Kingston are kind of like pivotal parts of the whole company. So they will get the win. And the big question is, how? I mean, what the hell are they going to do? If they do main event Rampage, after everything we've seen on Grand Slam and everything else we've seen with CM Punk, they are going to have to pull it out the drawer it's probably just going to be, I don't know, some kind of weapon and then somebody's probably going to get stabbed. I cannot wait though. I cannot wait. But also, yes, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston will win. And the secret best thing about it will be the reaction that Eddie Kingston gets. As everybody keeps saying, he has no idea. So there you go. AEW Rampage and AEW Grand Slam. They are my predictions. And I just think it is absolutely kerfuffling that we even have this just around the corner. Now make sure, like I say, you go into the comments, what do you think is gonna happen? And then we can reconvene and see if we're smart or if we're a bunch of idiots. Also, please do like the video, share the video and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can keep up to date with all the latest wrestling news. Make sure you come say hello on social media. And there are a bunch of other videos here on YouTube. Take your finger and give one of them a click. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. And look, if nothing else, make sure you enjoy Rampage. Make sure you enjoy Dynamite Grand Slam, whatever the hell you want to call it. We are living in fantastic wrestling times and we should dive in with both feet. I will see you soon.